Hey, welcome to uh, chapter three of uh, conceptual physics. Um, this we actually call this uh, part one. I'm going to do about uh, half of the chapter. I'm going to do the easy part, and then you'll have another video with the uh, second half of chapter three. We are going to look at motion being relative. We're going to look at speed. We're going to look at velocity, and that's the place where this video will stop. This one should be uh, pretty straightforward for you to understand. It's going to get a little bit more complicated in the second half. No, nah, not complicated. Um, some new ideas for you in the second half where we look at acceleration, uh, free fall, and velocity vectors. Um, and the hard part, the new part, the uh, thing you'll have to wrap your brain around is the acceleration. Free fall and velocity vectors will be pretty straightforward. If you haven't done so already, this would be a good place to look at the video clip I gave you. Uh, it's from the Johnny Depp movie, um, The Lone Ranger, and it's a pretty good example of motion being relative. Uh, the video clip has got uh, trains and guns and horses and cowboys and Indians and, sh and, and the sheriff and a uh, whole lot of motion going on. Uh, and we'll talk about that in class. All right. Uh, the idea that motion is relative was something that Galileo and Copernicus and uh, the other Renaissance guys um, uh, introduced to society. And, and it's the idea, remember that prior to that, um, not everybody, but, but some people, um, you know, thought that the earth was stationary and everything moved around us. Challenge that with the idea that the earth is moving and somebody says, well, gosh, you know, why can I still stand up straight? How come, how come the apple still falls straight down from the tree if, if I'm not on solid ground, if the ground is moving? Um, and, and what uh, the, the new idea here, and maybe as a new idea to you, is the idea that motion is relative. When I consider one thing moving, I can only consider it moving in relationship to something else. Um, this sounds a whole lot more complicated than it really is. Uh, um, an easy example is uh, suppose that you and I are both driving up to Columbus on I-75. We're in different cars, but we are in the lanes right beside each other. When I roll down the window, I can have a conversation with you. I can toss you a sandwich um, because, or I can hand you a sandwich. I couldn't toss it. But uh, if you and I um, are looking at our motion relative to the ground, we're moving to Columbus. If you and I look at our motion relative to each other, we are standing still. Uh, in the classic movie scene is the one where uh, the, train is, uh, the train is chugging along and uh, somebody rides up on a horse and is able to just step from the horse to the train because when they're going when, when the motion of the train and the motion of the horse are the same, then there's no motion between them, and you can go back and forth between them. So that's all that uh, this idea of relative motion means. Um, the, only, the only way that you'll have to apply this one is the idea that when you are solving a problem, you need to look very closely at uh, um, how you've set your problem up. What, when you're looking at a particular motion, what it is, is it relative to? And we're always going to assume that our motion is relative to Earth uh, and the kinds of problems that we, we, we work. All right, that's all for relative motion. Let's move ahead to the idea of speed. Um, here's, a place where your, here's a place where your physics um, language is going to have to be precise because we're going to look at a difference between speed and velocity. Um, or ordinary language, they, you might use them interchangeably. In physics, they are different and specific. This would be a good time to take a break and look at the extra video links that I sent you. Uh, they came from the textbook publisher, the definition of speed, linear motion definition, and average speed. All right. When we talk about speed, we are talking about the distance covered per amount of travel time. And our units are going to be meters per second, 
they don't have to be meters per second. They might be miles per hour. Um, is one that you're probably familiar with. Again, you know, you're an expert on speed and velocity because of the cars that you've been riding in and driving. Um, but it's always some, some measure of distance and some measure of time. And, of course, we, uh, we use the word per to indicate that we're dividing them. Um, in this chapter and going forward, you're going to see that equations are indicated with a green box. Um, from, from this point forward, um, look at an equation the same way that you look at a vocabulary term. Um, I've put them in the Quizlets for you. It is something that uh, you're going to want to remember. And again, it's very specific. Speed is not the same as velocity, um, even though it might be in ordinary language. You know, you know how this works. Um, you, you're an expert in speed. Supposing that you can run four meters in two seconds, what's your speed? Your speed is two meters per second. When we talk about average speed, uh, and this is probably the speed that uh, um, you think about on a pretty regular basis, you've got a uh, you've got a uh, formula. This is what we just did. Um, it is the the distance divided by the time. So here's your example: 200 kilometers divided by two hours comes to 100 kilometers per hour, okay? I don't need to remind you, always keep your units with your numbers. It's going to get more complicated, and uh, we will, uh, well, rule of thumb, never write down a number without having a unit with it, kilometers per hour. Okay, quiz time. Um, Try to work this out before you don't just zoom ahead to the answer. Try to engage a little bit here and work it out. Um, so I'm driving 30 kilometers in one hour. So my speed, remember your formula, is distance divided by time. And the question here is um, the speed of 30 kilometers in one hour, is that the same as 30 kilometers in a half hour, 30 kilometers in two hours, 60 kilometers in a half hour, or 60 kilometers in two hour. What is the equivalent, what speed is equivalent to this 30 kilometers per half hour? All right. You can work this out, or uh, you might just, you, I hope you can just do this one in your head. Um, 60 kilometers in two hours, the speed here, if I were to calculate it, 60 kilometers divided by two hours equals 30 kilometers per hour, just like the last one. Okay? Bring this up in class if it doesn't make sense to you. Um, you are familiar with, uh, with the idea of an average speed. You're probably, those of you who are driving, um, are probably more familiar with an instantaneous speed. And think about it, there is a gauge in your car that tells you the instantaneous speed, the speed at a given instant. This is what can get you a ticket. Um, so you are in your car, you are either driving or riding from home to school. Uh, you are not driving, um, maybe, maybe, maybe if you took the total time um, and uh, divide that into the total distance, you come up with an average speed. And maybe the average speed to get from school to home um, or from home to school uh, that you can do, you can do three miles in 
10 minutes. Um, uh, that might be a little bit fast, but uh, you are not driving that speed the entire distance of the trip. You slow down to a stop sign, you speed up, leaving an intersection. Uh, so um, you might have an average speed, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe overall you follow the speed limit to get from home to school, but along the way um, you went slower and faster. Your speedometer is telling you your instant speed. Now, in your speedometer, is it telling you how fast you were going yesterday? Is it telling you how fast you were going um, an hour ago? No, it's telling you how fast you are going right now. And that's the whole idea of instantaneous speed. There's, there's your big word, okay? So we have covered relative motion, speed, What's the difference between speed and velocity? That's what we're going to talk about next. You have got uh, some videos to look at. Um, real short, it's the author of your textbook talking about velo velocity. Um, he's got some good examples and uh, a good way of working with the formulas. Velocity, I'll give you, I'll, I'll go to the punchline. Velocity is a vector. Remember what a vector is? A vector has both magnitude and direction. That's the difference between velocity and speed. Um, velocity is instantaneous and includes the direction of the travel. So what's the difference between speed and velocity? Well, at constant speed is a steady speed that's neither slowing up nor slowing down, but a constant velocity is still a constant speed and a constant direction. It's a vector. Um, to jump ahead a little bit, um, to uh, be a constant speed, it's got to be a straight line because when you change direction, there's some sort of acceleration involved. 